there's a competitive robotics revolution going on. And it's changing kids' lives all over the world. The number of X robotics teams has grown by 30% a year for the past five years. This season, they expect to have 20,000 teams from 40 different countries serving 200,000 young people. The genius is in the game. A game that's bringing science, technology, engineering, and mathematics to life for thousands of kids all over the country. If you look in the Guinness Book of World Records under largest robotics competition, you'll find the 2016 VEX Worlds in Louisville, Kentucky. 1,100 robotics teams from 30 different nations gathered to compete. Before the first match was played, over 15,000 competitors, advisors, and their families gathered in Freedom Hall to celebrate their accomplishment of making it to the Olympics of robotics. It was a rock concert type atmosphere. The lights were down, music's pumping, laser light shows and smoke machines. A rowdy collection of nerds <laughs> yelling team chants and bouncing beach balls across the stands as the announcer revved the crowd up into a frenzy. Now, standing stage left is a robotic cult celebrity named Karthik Kanagasabapathy. <laughs> He's dwarfed by this huge video screen. As he announces country after country, the kids walk across the stage, waving to the crowd, proudly holding their nation's flag. It's truly a spectacle to behold. Starting with this parade of nations, and ending with a one-hour special that was aired on ESPN2. <laughs> this is a collection of the best elementary, middle school, high school, and university <laughs> VEX robotics teams on the planet. Just to be here, they needed to be one of the best teams in their state or one of the best teams in their entire country. It's recognizing a group of people that have always been there, but they haven't always had a place to shine. These kids are treated like rock stars, competing at a world-class level, using their brains instead of their brawn. The nonprofit that puts on the world competition is called the Robotic Education and Competition Foundation. I agree, I agree with their president, Jason Morella, when he says, these kids have already won before they play their first match. The teamwork and problem-solving skills they take away from this experience will prepare them for future careers in STEM fields and serve them throughout their lives. From our nation's capital, to our state's top employers, to Washington educators, there's clear agreement that we need to bring STEM to life. Oftentimes, if a class isn't engaging enough, or the answers don't come easily at first, kids and adults alike resign themselves to the belief that they're not good at math and science. Now, we all know someone who said something like this. Maybe that someone is you. But I'd like you to think about when did these ideas originate in our minds? Could it be that we might bias the choices of what careers we choose to pursue based on one negative experience in one class, say in the seventh or eighth grade? A class that represents a very tiny slice of what careers in science and math might have to offer. But once a person convinces themselves that STEM subjects aren't for them, it can become a self-fulfilling prophecy. STEM is influencing every career out there. It's the best ticket to a good job in today's market and the only ticket to a good job in the future, according to Washington STEM. We don't want a 12 or 13 year old kid to abandon the opportunities a STEM career might hold for them before giving themselves a chance to explore all of their options. I see it every year. Kids walk into my eighth grade classroom with their minds made up. They're not good at robotics. But as the semester goes on, they realize that there's very different skills that can be used to be good at robotics and engineering. Some kids are natural builders. Man, they can look at a gear and automatically get it. But when it comes time to programming, they struggle. The same kid's mind that's gifted with spatial awareness doesn't always logically organize commands for a robot. Now, that doesn't mean they can't learn what doesn't come easily to them. It just means that it's hard and they need incentive to keep trying. If we want kids to dive into their studies in complicated STEM subjects, helps if they actually want to know the answer. 
in fact, it's better if they need to know the answer to have a robot pick something up or toss it across the field. We need to find ways to apply and extend the STEM skills kids are learning in the classroom. And if you do it the right way, they'll beg you for more. In over 21 years of teaching, I haven't seen anything that does this better than competitive robotics. They come and ask how to do something because they want to have a more competitive robot. They go searching for answers from advisors and teachers and classmates and fellow competitors from around the world. It's not uncommon for a design team to post a question on the VEX forum and receive input from kids and advisors from different states or even different countries. One of our teams from Lake Stevens spent the summer collaborating with a group from Texas that they met at the world competition last year, bouncing ideas back and forth, trying to come up with the best robot possible. This game fosters an environment of international collaboration where the rising tide of shared knowledge lifts all teams to new heights, making what seemed impossible at first glance commonplace by the end of the season. See, the genius is in the game. It's fun. It gives kids a chance to be part of a team and compete at a high level. In most individual and team sports, you need to have athletic skill and coordination. But in this game, they build their athlete. Now, every year the game changes. For example, in 2015, robots needed to take these yellow towers and uh, yellow pegs and make this tower, and they put these cubes on top of it. Now, just about the time everybody gets pretty good at building these towers, the season ends at the VEX World Competition, and they unveil a totally new game. Now robots need to cruise around and pick up these four-inch Nerf balls and shoot them in a net. So the robot that won Worlds in 2015 can hardly score a point in this year's game. <laughs> you get just under a year to build your masterpiece and put it into the fire and see if it lives beyond the rest. <laughs> so robotics takes all the best things kids learn from being part of a team and mixes in all the things you want them to do in the classroom around STEM. You can't just buy your kid or student a robotic set. Oftentimes it doesn't work and just sits on the shelf. But if you teach a student and his good friends how to play a game, it's different. Not only does the stuff not sit on the shelf, you can't get them to stop. The game provides the catalyst for kids to want to work hard and persevere. Let's take a look at this year's game. Vex Robotics Competition, Starstruck. Starstruck is played on a 12 foot by 12 foot field by two alliances, one red and one blue, each made up of two teams. The object of the game is to attain a higher score than the opposing alliance by scoring stars and cubes across the fence into the scoring zones. Stars are worth one point in the near zone and two points in the far zone. Cubes are worth two points in the near zone and four points in the far zone. Points are scored by getting stars and cubes to the other side of the fence. But you're going to have to be creative because the fence will keep robots on their own side of the field. Just pick up the star and throw it over the fence, right? Coming up with an idea for a robot that can do that's manageable. And then the teams try and build their ideas and all these things they didn't think about smack them in the face. Issues with building and wiring and programming. At this point, without the draw of the competition, a lot of kids would walk away frustrated thinking robotics is not my thing. Instead, they relish the challenge and enjoy solving the riddle of how to get their robot better with each prototype. They pour their hearts and souls into the design process. In, a in addition to spending four hours a week at Robotics Club in Lake Stevens, we have kids that'll check the robot out on weekends, they come in before school, they come in after school. We literally have to lock the door of the engineering lab to keep them out. <laughs> in addition to, I also started an, a neighborhood robotics team with some kids on the street, and I wanted to share a story from their experience. So picture this, you're nine years old, 
and you and your good friends have been spending countless hours designing, building, and programming the drugster. <laughs> it's your pride and joy. You walk into the first match of your life, partnered with a team of complete strangers in an attempt to come up with a plan of how you're going to work together. The ref asks if you're ready, and you turn the robot on. Now, keep in mind that the dragster up until this point had never let you down. It had worked flawlessly in the six weeks of testing and practice. <laughs> that is, until today. At this critical moment, some crazy error about a motor pops up on the robot's brain and the mo team's mood shifts from nervous excitement to confusion and frustration. So, after some tears and some intense discussion, they decide they're going to switch out one of the motors. So my son, Ole Patrick Linus, <laughs> leaps into action. He goes back to the pit area, comes running back around the corner with his hand held high, triumphantly holding a spare battery instead of a motor. <laughs> he grabbed the wrong thing. So they eventually got the motor and frantically put it together and they were able to play in their first match ever. Stuff like this happens all the time in competitive robotics. If the parents and coaches have the courage to let kids fail and solve their own problems, then the experience these kids have can be very rewarding. At robotics tournaments, students are forced into social situations and they get way outside their comfort zones. This is how one of our experienced robotic competitors describes their experience. People usually picture that the nerdy boys would be the most successful, but I learned very quickly that you need to have good social skills in order to be successful in robotics. I don't know if they did it on purpose, but the format of the game is exactly what some of these kids with brilliant technical minds and lacking social skills need. All day long at a robotics tournament, students are forced into situations where they need to strategize and communicate with other teams. Giving them the opportunity to practice and develop the communication skills they'll need to be employable and successful in any career they choose. Competitive robotics gives kids the opportunity to be better than they thought they could be. Work harder than they've worked on anything in their lives. It recognizes and celebrates creativity and innovative design, bringing world-class competition to a cerebral group of young people that are going to take over the world. There's parents and advisors all over the country that are starting up VEX robotics teams. All it takes is a person who cares about kids, is a little bit nerdy, <laughs> and has the time and resources to give kids an opportunity to play. You don't even need to know that much about robots. The Rec Foundation website has everything you need to get started. If STEM equals opportunity, then I believe every kid at every school should have access to an affordable, high-quality robotics program. And I invite you to join me in helping make that happen. Don't wait. The life you change this year might change the world. Thank you.